Hello, sir. Hi, How SS. Are How you doing? I am doing great, sir. I'm uh, so happy to meet you, see you, talk to you. Uh, it's an honor. Well, I have to tell you, I thought your movie was outstanding. I, I didn't, I hadn't seen it when we met, but I, yeah. I, I saw it last week and sat. It was just amazing. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was, <laughs> it was just for me. It was like eye candy. And, <laughs> Thank um, you. and I, I thought the performances of, of Rama and Ram and Aaliyah and and all of the, the cast was just. And Allison Duty, my girl from Last Crusade. <laughs> You know, yeah, uh, yeah. who I was, I kind of, in your movie, I was kind of happy to see how she, how you ended her story because <laughs> she was so heinous as was her husband. Um, but, but a beautiful visual style. And um, I, I just thought it was extraordinary to look at and, and to experience. So congratulations for, for RRR. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I can almost get up from the chair and do a dance. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Thank you so much, and I'm so happy that you saw the film. Thank you so much, sir. And, well, well, we're not when well, we're not on this sort of Zoom professionally, and we see each other again. I have a lot of questions I want to ask you about how you made the movie. I've got uh, a lot of questions, so we must meet so I can ask you questions. Uh, uh, the moment I'm landing there, uh, I'm going to uh, somehow. Uh, uh, beg, borrow, steal time uh, from your contact your office and beg, borrow yes. uh, time and and yes. I'm taking this opportunity to do that, sir. Thank you. I would love that. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, coming to uh, Fablemans, um, it was such a joyous experience. I wish I could see it in the theater. I could, I could only see it in the, uh, but obviously it is releasing this weekend uh, in India. I could see it only on the OTT, but still it was so different from your other movies. But at the end of it, the joy that we usually get from your movies is, is always there in a completely different way. But it was so joyous to watch your movie. Thank you very much. I, I, have, I have many, 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 many uh, questions about your film. Um, the first and foremost thing is like... Uh, for people who, who don't know, it is it is your uh, a kind of autobiography. Almost all the incidents are based on your uh, real life. My my, as I was watching the movie, I didn't have any inclination about what I was going to see, except except that I know it was a part of your uh, of your life. But as I was watching, I was seeing the unraveling of not only your personal life but your parents' life, your siblings' life, and. And as I was watching it, I was I was thinking, what would have been his thought process? Uh, what is that? It is different from all your films to this because you're you're talking about your not only your personal life but the personal life of your parents, and you are just putting it to the world. Were you worried? Were you scared? Were you apprehensive? <laughs> uh, I really want to know how. Uh, what was your thought process? on the approach to a Fablemans? Well, well, the decision to tell my own story, because I've been so, I've been so, uh, I, I've always felt so safe in telling the stories of others. And I've always found my place behind someone else's story, steering the story um, and communicating the story, but not taking responsibility for the content of the story, because the content, I, I, it was was authored by novelists or historians or other people's stories, and I've always been a pretty good captain of a ship I did not build. But all of a sudden, I'm now the captain of a ship that I was not only p p on the crew building from scratch, along with my sisters and my mother and father, but suddenly I'm I have a larger responsibility to tell the truth about some of the things that happened to me in my formative growing up years. But at the same time, I didn't want to hurt anyone. I didn't want to hurt my three sisters. I didn't want to embarrass my family. And yet I needed to sort of struggle with some of the trauma that we all experienced as everyone experiences when they come from a broken home and when they come from divorce. 
and when they come from anti-Semitism, let's say, which, which happened to me in high school. Uh, um, so this was, I, I felt like I wasn't wearing as many clothes as I often wear when I'm making, telling someone else's stories. I had, I felt like I was wearing a t-shirt and bathing trunks when I made the Fablemans. That's how exposed <laughs> I felt in, 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 in daring to tell a story about things that happened to, to me. Yeah, uh, uh, as I was uh, uh, watching the film, uh, initially, what it felt like was, oh my God, he's, he's picturizing his own mom as not so good, uh, where, where I was uh, uh, sympathizing, empathizing with the father, but how, how can he do that? How can he show his mother in a bad light? But as we progress, we understand uh, the difficulty of the situation. No one is bad. It is not about a person being good or bad. It's about following your heart and uh, following your duty, maybe a conflict between the uh, duty, family duty and the heart. Yes. I yes. was so uh, wonderfully presented. Yes. You're, you're absolutely but, right. The story, there are, there are no villains in the story at all. Yes. If yes. anything, if anything, the villains are the people outside the story that belittle you for reasons yes. that empower them by belittling and diminishing you. And the, the, so the villains, the bullies obviously are the villains of the story, but even the bullies have their own personal secrets yes. that causes the, my main bully to have yeah. that emotional reaction, which I don't want to give yeah. away at the end of the yeah. story. Yes. Um, but, you know, my, um, I, I really believe that because there are no villains in the story, it's a story about love. Uh, it's a story about a, a young boy, much like myself, named Sammy Fableman, who falls in love with movie cameras and making movies with his neighborhood friends, which eventually is going to lead him to a career. Um, and it's a story about his mother, who, who never plans to fall in love with her, her husband's best friend and business partner, which is absolutely what happened in our lives. It's exactly what happened. And, um, and it, it's about following your heart uh, and, and, and not sacrificing yourself and your own happiness and your own future to make others around you safe and comfortable. My yeah. mom was very, she took life into her own hands and she had a huge, beautiful personality, but she was always very honest about what she needed and what she wanted from this life. And she, she took it for herself, but she still brought all of us along with her. So we never felt abandoned by her, the choices that she was making. She always included us in her choices. Yes, and, and uh, I think it is so difficult to, I mean, she's a real life character, but to write yeah. that character on paper uh, and make it look so justified, her actions, her, to make the actions look so justified, I think that, that required fantastic writing and fantastic performance uh, uh, by the actor. Unfortunately, I don't know her name. But Michelle, she, Michelle Williams. Uh, Michelle, Michelle yeah. Williams played, <laughs> played Mitzi. She did a and, fantastic yeah. job uh, 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 with that. And, and uh, when I uh, uh, saw the two, two scenes, two and a half scenes of Uncle Boris, I just fell in love with that uh, guy. But I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, art and family, were you ever torn apart in your life? I, I don't think art and family was a question that was posed to me when I was 16, 17 years old. But Tony Kushner and I wrote that scene, which we think is kind of the unifying theory of this film, of this entire film mm -hmm. about art. And, it, we, and it's, it, 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 it's kind of scary when you take a position in any movie to try to define what art is, because art means something to everyone, to the artist and to the, 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 all of us appreciating someone else's art. It means so many different things. But... The personal meaning about art and family will tear you in half happened to me later after I had already established myself as a filmmaker, as a working director. And Kate and I started raising a family and we started having children. We have seven kids now. But the, the, the choice I had to make in taking a job that would move me to another country for four or five months 
where I wouldn't see my family every day. That was the art and family that pulled that that was really a rending, ripping kind of experience. The choices yes. I had to make, and there were several films where I chose not to make. They offered me Harry Potter. I chose to turn down the first Harry Potter to basically oh. spend that next year and a half with my family, my young kids growing up. Yeah. So I I sacrificed a great franchise, which I'm very, which is very happy even today, looking back, very happy to have done to be with my family. Other times, my family stayed in Los Angeles, and I went abroad to, to tell a story. Yeah, I, I can really understand. Luckily for me. I keep my whole family in the film business. My wife, my son, my kids, my brother, my brother's wife. Everyone is with me along along with me making movies, so I don't miss my family. I'm well, that happens the- sometimes. I've made a number of films where my family has actually moved to to like my whole family came to Poland when I made Schindler's List. We all lived in Krakow for four and a half yeah. months. But there are other <laughs> films where you can't do that. Of course, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, So uh, there was one wins one scene which I thought was the best scene in the movie. I don't want to uh, uh, give it away, uh, but uh, uh, before the climax, the the heartbreaking scene, uh, and the the last shot before the scene when we see the Sam's character picturizing that heartbreaking moment with his camera. What was your thought? Uh, behind that, why did you place that shot there? This is at the very end, right? Yes. I, I guess you know. Do we say we you know we we had that we had that term we use about knocking down the fourth wall, where yes. where we we hope to tell stories that the audience is inside the story, and by the end of any movie, the audience wants to feel mm-hmm. like they're still inside the experience of watching those characters and hearing, 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 hearing how those characters are going to end the story or how the story is going to end. But I took a chance to knock down the fourth wall to take the advice of a great filmmaker, the advice that he gave me about the horizon, and which really happened, by the way, that word for word is to the best of my recollection, that's exactly what oh. happened to me when I was 16 years old and met that great man for the first and last time. And so I just wanted to knock down the fourth wall to sort of say, I also learned something from that. <laughs> uh, uh, that. That was a great scene, by the way. But the question I had was like, when Sam picturizes his grieving family with the camera, uh, uh, what was the meaning behind that particular shot? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sometimes when, you know, you know, when I, when I was growing up and there was trauma in all of our lives, there's always trauma. No family, you know, can survive yeah. childhood without some form of trauma. And, and with me, when I discovered the movie camera as a kid, I could sometimes use my imagination when things were really bad at home mm-hmm. to imagine that I was making a movie of how bad things were at home. Even if I wasn't making the actual movie, I would pretend I was. Mm-hmm. And it blunted the pain. And I think in that moment of trauma, when Sammy hears the news of what's about to happen between his mother and father, which is going to change their lives forever, Sammy imagines himself and looks up and sees himself in the mirror Mm. with a movie camera filming the traumatic sequence, when in fact, he's just sitting there trying to blunt the pain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I took it in a slightly uh, different manner uh, that happens to me uh, then some sad incident is happening around and it's going for some time. One part of my brain is feeling the pain. One part of my brain will be thinking of how how would I pictureize that scene or how would that scene make its movie into a story? And I feel I'm such a horrible person, but I just can't stop my, my, my storyteller part of me. And uh, when I when I saw that, scene, I thought, okay, Steven Spielberg is also as horrible person like me. If he, if he really felt like that, <laughs> I, I thought uh, that way, uh, maybe it is not, but uh, that, that connected to me in a, in, in a very strong way. Well, I think any, anybody that goes into the movie business and wants to be a writer or a director or an actor uh, or, any, 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 or in any of the crafts, you know, uses the stuff that happens to them in their own lives. Yeah. to to 
create things to help tell a story. So I think some of the worst things that happen to us when we get into the movie business, we take some of those worst things and say, okay, let's profit from that pain and put it on the screen and see if anybody <laughs> else can identify with it or agrees <laughs> with it. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm, I'm sure. Um, for, uh, in, the, in the same scene, uh, what truly amazed me was the, the performance of the actors, of course, senior actors, experienced actors, I can understand. But the, but the four young actors, particularly the two girls, to perform to that extent, I was like really, really blown away. One part of me was like just feeling the, the scene, but the director part of me was thinking like, how could he make such young actors perform with to that uh, to that extent? I would I would really like to know how you make your actors uh, reach that level of performance. Well, I think yeah. the younger the, the I think the younger the actor is, the less of a performance they give. But the younger the actor is, that young actor is more in connection with their own personal, individual feelings. And I kind of, when I'm casting young people, I try to cast young people who can play themselves, not who can do an accent or who, who can put on a costume and be nothing like they are in real life. But I try to cast actors who are very exactly like who they are in real life and then get them to believe that what's happening to these characters is actually in real time happening to them. And that's why I think these young actors are able to be so closely in touch with their own humanity or their, and, and, and the depth of their feelings, even feelings they don't quite yet understand because they haven't been to an analyst yet and, <laughs> and they haven't been in, in deep relationships or they haven't yet had their hearts broken, but they're young enough to be in real close proximity with how they really feel. And that's where some of the best performances come from. I think this is a gold nugget for for me and many other directors. Like, like uh, the 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 point lies in casting, not not on the day of the shoot, but like how you cast your actors. That is uh, uh, the secret lies there. That's uh, that's a very important lesson. And coming to uh, the young directors, I face this difficulty many times when uh, when people ask me what is the advice for young directors. Uh, how should they approach? Uh, one one part of me tells me that you have to work your asses off. You have to work mm -hmm. so many years in the industry. You learn the uh, uh, how how industry works. You have the experience. You don't rush into things. As ex with experience, you know uh, not only the film techniques but also the the emotions and how to carry the emotions to the uh, to the audiences. You learn all those things. One part of me wants to tell that. Other part of me thinks like, am I thinking too old? The newer generation are so capable of multitasking, probably, and the kind of tools that they have in their hand, we didn't have as uh, in, in our learning days. Probably they should just jump in and, and learn. So what is your advice for young filmmakers? What, which is the right way to do it? Well, a young filmmaker who is free to tell their own stories, stories that they make up inside their imaginations, um, my advice to them, if they have a, like a, if they're using their phone as a camera, because you can make an entire movie on your phone today. We didn't have that luxury when we yes. were growing up. Um, but when you can do that today, I would simply say, uh, tell stories that you're familiar with, you know, do what you know. Uh, find as much of yourself to put in that film, even if the film science fiction or an adventure or something that is fantasy or something that is not realistic. There's still a lot of truth about who the filmmaker is that if you're in touch with that truth, you'll put a lot of your own personality into those different stories. But if you're a young director that's been given a chance to prove themselves professionally, you're given a budget, and at a very short schedule, much too short, mm -hmm. and you're often given actors that you don't choose yourself. Um, that's, that's, that's the hardest position to be in, and yet it's a tremendous opportunity 
to use those collaborators and actors and other crew members that have had more experience than you. Listen, don't talk. That's Uncle Boris says to Sammy, <laughs> shush, you talk too much. Listen, <laughs> that would be my advice to young filmmakers. Don't talk so much. Listen, listen to people that you're working with that have done more work than you. They've got tremendous advice they can give you and they'll teach you the art of collaboration because you cannot make a movie like RRR, which, which, which as you know, I loved the film that you directed and wrote and, and collaborated on. You cannot make a movie like that without having everybody in a collaboration where everyone feels that they're making a contribution of the best of who they are. So your movie will be the best thing you've made. And that is something that I would always tell a young filmmaker, you know, you know, seek the advice of your elders, so to speak, and collaborate and listen. Great. Listen, I'll take that single word. Listen, don't talk, listen. <laughs> and, but, uh, uh, but, uh, if, if I say, uh, as a young filmmaker, assuming that I'm a young filmmaker stepping into the uh, into my first film and uh, there's a producer or a studio who is putting their money uh, on me, believing that I deliver. And if I tell my, if I ask my, my production designer or cameraman or the story writer, someone says, to say that I don't know how to do this. If I say, I don't know, will that, uh, make my producer or my studio lose faith in me? Will they look down upon uh, look down upon me if I say I don't know? You know what? Uh, when I was about to make Jaws, I met a famous American director named Henry Hathaway, and I was about to go off to Martha's Vineyard, which I thought would be a three month shoot, turned out to be seven months in Martha's Vineyard. I went way over schedule on that one, but Henry Hathaway said to me, "Let me give you some advice." When you come to the set in the morning and you don't have any ideas or you've run out of ideas, or you don't quite know what to do, pretend you have every idea in the world. Don't show weakness in front of your crew or they'll all disrespect you. And I did not listen to that advice because on Jaws, it was so hard to make. I needed everyone's help. And if I had taken Henry Hathaway's advice and pretended that I had all the answers, I would have been laughed off the Atlantic Ocean because nobody had the answers <laughs> in how to make Jaws, except the ocean and the people building the mechanical shark. <laughs> that was that was uh, a great. I have, uh, I mean, I have my own experience, but uh, I wouldn't take uh, my time uh, for in this. In this, uh, I, I'll explain to you when we when we meet in uh, Los Angeles. So, uh, one more question on the same thing. This is not just for the young filmmakers, but filmmakers in India, uh, is there an approach that we as Indian filmmakers have to change to, to pursue the, the Oscar dream? Uh, uh, it is such a big thing for many of us, or most of the world. So is there something that we should change or something we follow to, uh, to chase the Oscar dream? Because uh, we have been lagging behind quite a lot. So uh, do you think uh, we should do something different. I, I would I would never presume to give advice about what anyone should do differently based on you know the country you're from and the culture you've grow, grow, grown up with and and the, the collaborate the stories you want to tell. I would just say keep telling your own stories and don't try to conform your stories to stories you think the world wants to hear. Because then you're working for the world. You're not working from your own heart. Tell the stories that come from your heart and, and that will service you for the rest of your career. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, last question uh, I want to ask is like, uh, when, when I was uh, watching Fableman, uh, Fablemans, uh, it felt like there is so much more story to come. You, you, uh, uh, I didn't feel like this was an ending. I felt like this was a comma. So are we going to see more of Sam's story? Well, I, I, I can say right now, I don't have any plans to continue Sammy Fableman's stories beyond where the film fades out. 
um, yeah. because it was such a gratifying and satisfying and an uplifting experience for me. It was also a very heavy experience, a very sad experience. I had to, I had to recreate the, the divorce of my parents. I had to recreate a lot of things that made me cry on the movie, on the set when I was shooting. I'd have to sometimes walk away from the set and go outside and just breathe fresh air before returning. Uh, I, I'm not ready to go back into the gestalt of my life again in the foreseeable <laughs> future, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, why I ask the question is like, even though you are telling the story of your parents uh, or your siblings or your family, it was always through the point of view of Sam. How Sam perceived uh, the the closeness and the drifting away of his family. So as I was watching, I also thought we would see uh, how Hollywood works or how how difficult or easy is it for young Sam to uh, to venture into Hollywood from from his from a young pers guy's perspective? I thought we are we are going to see more. At least that's what we want to see as fans. I, I kind of believe in I kind of believe sometimes in predestiny yeah. that sometimes the stories that you deny yourself or say you will never tell, you find yourself in two or three years just telling the story that you denied. So. <laughs> Maybe someday it will happen. I don't think that's for me to say. If 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 if, if I suddenly get a, a message or a signal and I'm drawn to back to Sammy again, someday it could happen. But I have no plans, immediate plans, to do that right now. Uh, uh, thank you so much, sir. And for a person who has uh, uh, 22 nominations, three Oscar wins, uh, I don't think it's a point to say all the best for uh, for your uh, fourth one. And for a person who has so many successes, I don't need to wish that your film in India will be a big success. But we as fans really, really look forward for uh, uh, both of them uh, and hope you come to India to, to celebrate the success of Able Months here. Well, thank you. I miss India. I spent time there, as you know, in the 70s yeah. and 90s and 2000s. I, yeah. I, I love my partners, Reliance. You know, yeah. you know, um, and and uh, they've been partners with me for many years, and I have a lot of connections with India, which I'm very proud of. Hopefully, you'll find another story where you have to come and shoot here in India with Indians, with Indian crew, with Indian actors. I would love that. Last time I was in India was 1976 when I made Close Encounters of the Third yes. Kind in a small town yeah. called Hal outside uh -huh. of Mumbai or Bombay yes. in, in, in those days. Yes, yes. Uh, this time, hopefully, it's in Hyderabad, my hometown. <laughs> that would be great. Okay, it yeah. would be good. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, much. SS. Thank you so much. Hoping Thank to you. catch you in uh, Los Angeles very, very soon. Thank you, sir. I hope to see you here. Thank you. Yeah.